Welcome back. This is Chris Toy, your Boomer Tech Guide, and today we're going to do a quick and easy stir fry with some ingredients that we have in our refrigerator. And I'm also going to demonstrate a really quick, almost foolproof way to steam some rice. My mom's recipe. So let's start with the rice because that's going to take the longest. So what we'll do is you want to make sure that you have a pot that's at least two-thirds the size of the volume of the rice so that there's a chance for it to get ahead of steam without boiling over. I'm going to use jasmine rice, which is a long grain white rice. It cooks pretty easily. There we go. And let's put this. So my mom's recipe is that whatever amount of rice you're using, when you touch the top of the rice, you want the water or the liquid to just cover the first joint of your index finger. So I'm touching the top of the rice. I'm not touching the bottom of the pot. And uh, you want to probably figure on a quarter to a half a cup of raw rice per person, depending on the appetite of the people that you're going to be serving. And what we'll do is we'll put this on high. Let me get a cover here that fits. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a cover that fits well on, on it. Don't use one that doesn't belong. And you want to bring this to a boil. And as soon as you either hear it boiling or, see, or you see a puff of steam, you want to put it on low. And then you just need to wait 15 minutes. And as long as you don't lift the cover off, you will have steamed rice. If you lift the cover off, what will happen is that the steam escapes. And the steam is hotter than boiling water. And with the cover on, it puts pressure on the rice kernels, which puffs them up. If you keep looking in and the steam escapes, it cools off and only the outside cooks. The inside stays crunchy. And in order to cook the inside, you'll overcook the outside. So just don't take the cover off. If you can't stand it, get a glass cover or something like that. So we'll let that, we'll keep an eye on that. As soon as we see it steaming, we'll, uh, we'll put it down to low. So let me talk quickly about our woks. So these are cast iron woks, and if I had to choose one type of material, it would be cast iron. This is, kind of a family size wok. This is a 14 inch one. I think it's kind of ironic that the best cast iron wok is made by Lodge, which is made in the United States. So an American made wok. And here is a smaller Lodge wok as well. Um, this is a nine and a half inch wok. You can get a 12 inch one as well. So this one is good for two people. This one would be, you know, four to six people. So when you stir fry, what you want to make sure is that, number one, your wok is warmed up. So you want to have a warm wok or a hot wok, and you want your oil to be at room temperature. So hot wok, warm oil. And before you cook anything, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your materials, your, what you're going to be cooking, are they're ready to go. So let's do that. So let's kind of look at what we have. So we have some, um, some Brussels sprouts, which we'll prepare in a minute. We get some carrots. We've got, um, we had some scallops, some shrimp, some chicken, some mushrooms, which is plenty, I think. And um, when you're cooking with different ingredients, unless you want to cook that cooking each ingredient and take it out, 
what you want to do is you want to time when you put your ingredients based on how long you want them to cook. So in this instance, one of the first things that we're going to want to put in will be our root vegetables, so our carrots and our, we like our Brussels sprouts to be um, caramelized, tender, sweet, so those will go in first. Um, we want to have some flavor, so we'll also put in our flavoring, which is, in this case, will be ginger and garlic. Um, one of the last things we'll put in will be seafood. Uh, we'll put the chicken in pretty early and the mushrooms soon after that. But we'll just do that in a minute. So let's heat up our wok. And this is great. This stove is awesome. It has a, uh, a wok burner. Great. The other thing you're going to want is a nice um, heavy um, cutting board. Uh, this cutting board is actually uh, locally made by um, a student of mine, uh, Adam Pride. And uh, as a shout out to Adam, uh, he makes these. They're, they're great. Um, so when you stir fry, you're going to need some oil. And what you'll do is you want an oil that has. Um, a very high smoking point and avocado is one of uh, the oils that has the highest smoking point um, it goes to about 500 degrees before it starts to smoke so we're going to put a couple tablespoons right in there and I don't know if you saw it or not but the uh, the rice was boiling so I've already turned it down to low and I'm not going to look in so by the time I'm done cooking, this rice should be ready to go. So the oil is heating up. So let's start putting in what we want to cook the longest. So we have some Brussels sprouts. And what I'll do is I'll just cut the heel off those. And I'll cut them in half. Great to have a nice sharp knife, it makes life easy. This is a cleaver, which is an all purpose knife. So we're going to put these guys in. You'll hear that sizzling right away. And we'll add. Carrot. And um, I don't peel my carrots. All I do is I kind of give them a quick scrub. Like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll cut. So what you'll do is at about a 45 degree angle, you'll just, you can use your knuckle as a guide. And what that does is it exposes a lot of the interior of the of the carrot to cook. So we'll get these great little pieces of uniform size. And we'll just put those right in. Alright. So what's nice about a wok is that any liquid or oil in the wok will kind of migrate to the center of the wok and it tends to keep things from burning. So those are beginning to soften up, which is great. So the next thing we'll put in is some flavoring. And what I like to use is fresh ginger and fresh garlic. And here's how I deal with that. So here's a piece of ginger, and I'm going to cut it just like I would cut a log. So what I have is I have this piece of ginger, and the grain is going this way, which means when I hit this, it will just fall apart. So watch. Excuse the noise. So you can kind of see what's, what it's done. Kind of makes a mess sometimes. And then 
like that. And I'll just scoop that onto there. And we'll add this for flavoring. So it just kind of falls apart. We'll give that a stir. And you can see our Brussels sprouts are starting to caramelize a little bit. And our carrots will soften up. Go. All right. So let's add some garlic. We'll treat it the same way. We peeled it and we'll just like that and then we'll put that right in. Another quick stir. Carrots are starting to soften up. All right. So the next thing we want to cook for a long period of time will be the chicken. No one likes rare chicken. So what I like to use is boneless chicken thighs uh, because they're dark meat and they tend to uh, have a higher fat content. And um, fat, F-A-T, I like to say it's an acronym. It stands for flavor and taste. There we go. So that's about, it's a, you know, half inch slices. And we'll put those right in. Just wash this a little bit. Give this a stir. So those Brussels sprouts are really nice. So that's getting flavored by the ginger and the garlic that we put in. And that chicken cooks up really fast. And stir frying is a relatively dry process. If you look in there, you'll see that there's not a lot of excess liquid in there. Any liquid is actually coming from the vegetables and the oil is coating them. All right, so we'll let that continue to cook. So the next thing we'll put in will be some mushrooms. Let me get a different knife here. And these are baby portabellas. And I'll just cut those into four pieces. And we'll just put those right in. You can see in the background that the uh, rice is steaming. That's on low. Oh, by the way, the wok is, um, it's on a medium high. And that cast iron really holds, holds the heat nicely. It maintains that sizzling that you need for stir frying. So, let's, um, Let's look at our seafood. So these are sea scallops. And what I like to do with scallops, you want to use uh, the large sea scallops, is I cut them like a coin. This is where it's good to have a really sharp knife. And we'll just slice it like a coin, just like that. And what that will do, well, they're bite-sized, but they'll also, they will literally cook in like 30 seconds if you just slice it like that. So I'm slicing it gently, just like that. And then we have some shrimp, medium shrimp. And what I do is take the tails off with the, with the shell on. And I'm just gonna slice it like that. Again, if you have a nice sharp knife, you don't have to push very hard so you can maintain good control. 
So let's go over here. All right, so those carrots are nice and soft. You got nice caramelized Brussels sprouts. The chicken's definitely cooked. So we're gonna put our shrimp in. And the way I cut the shrimp, what will happen is as it cooks, it'll turn into a rotini shape, which is great because that shape will hold a lot of the flavor. So that will take maybe a minute or so to cook up. Let me just grab this escape. Right, I don't know if you can see it or not, but see the shrimp starts to curl. And that'll become more pronounced as it cooks. So our next to the last ingredient will be our scallops. We'll give those a toss. Remember, these are gonna cook pretty quickly. I can get them separated. There we go. All right, and you can tell when the, the scallops are, are cooked and they'll start to crack around the edges. So let me grab, let's see if I can grab one from the bottom here. There we go. So you can see the cracks right around the edge. So that tells us that this, these scallops are just about done. I think it's been about 15 minutes on the rice that I've been talking since it was boiling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut that rice right off. All right. So we're going to put one more flavoring in, and that's going to be some scallions. And I like to use the whole scallion. I'm just going to cut these at about a half inch. There we go. drop those babies in there. So the last thing that I need to do is I'm gonna put in a little bit of sauce for flavoring. So when you stir fry, you don't stir fry with the sauce. The sauce goes on afterwards because you wanna maintain that high heat. So this is gonna be a pretty simple sauce. We're gonna put in equal parts of soy sauce and I'm going to use spicy ketchup. So let's put in like um, maybe a tablespoon. And a tablespoon. see that that just forms a nice sauce and you can hear you can tell the when as soon as I put the uh, liquid in it just stopped the sizzling which means the temperature dropped which is fine because everything's stir-fried the scallops are nice and cracked the shrimp has turned into rotini we know the chickens done we know that the vegetables are nice and caramelized. We could add other vegetables. So, let's see. Do we have steamed rice? There it is. Thanks, Mom, for the recipe. Okay. 
And yes, I've made too much rice, but maybe one of these times I'll show you what to do with leftover rice. And then, Looking forward to eating this. I'll leave some for Joan. All right. So there you have it. Stir fry, quick and easy. Let me try the scallop. Hot. Mmm. Yum. Maybe a shrimp. So that's it for now. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.